presenting to clients, entering an examination hall, waiting for test results. All of these experiences are nerve-wracking and can become immensely stressful. When this fear sticks with us for a long time, happens often and interferes with our ability to function in daily life, it's called anxiety. But specifically, what types of anxiety exist? Let's explore further. Welcome back to another Project Omao video. Today we'll be covering what is anxiety. So just a quick update for those who have not checked it out, this is the second video in our informative series. Last time we covered what is depression and how to help someone who might have depression or how to cope. Similarly, today we'll cover what anxiety is and how to help or cope with it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Anxiety is a broad topic. Some people react to anxiety with an intense fear or dread. Some get physically simulated and have an increased heart rate or get sweaty palms. Anxiety can also affect our sleep, causing us insomnia or oversleeping. Many things can cause anxiety. Much like depression and other mental illnesses, biological factors, trauma, unhealthy thought patterns and high tension situations can cause anxiety. In terms of mental illnesses, there is generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety. Let's talk about Generalized Anxiety Disorder, GAD, first. Generalized Anxiety Disorder is a type of anxiety where sufferers worry about things more excessively than the average person. An example could be worrying about finances. While most worry about this to a certain extent, people who suffer from GAD might worry about this to the point where they scare themselves. So for example, they may think out of the box, thinking things such as what if my car crashes? What if my insurance isn't enough to cover it? What if even after my insurance is not enough and my family goes bankrupt trying to pay for my funerals or, or for example, hospital bills? People who have JAD worry about a wide range of things a lot versus people who suffer from social anxiety. People who suffer from social anxiety worry about the implications of their actions in social matters more than general anxieties in their day-to-day -day life. Social anxiety can sometimes come with GAD, making it something like a subset. People who suffer from social anxiety typically worry about meeting new people, performing in front of others, and worry about being stupid in front of others. Anxiety can be treated in several ways, such as psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBD, medications, and coping methods. Some coping methods include calming strategies such as deep breaths. There are also solution-focused coping strategies such as using time management tools like forest to help you cope when you are overwhelmed. Here are four ways to cope and, help, and possibly help you overcome anxiety. First and foremost, mindfulness. It's always important to stay in control of our own thoughts. When you have anxiety, your thoughts may begin to start spiraling, causing you to spiral as well. Using mindfulness to cope brings your mind back to the present, helping you to deal with the present instead of the hypothetical situations your brain has come up with. Many people practice mindfulness by meditating or praying if they are religious. Secondly, and closely linked to mindfulness would be learning your triggers. If you realize that you often experience anxiety with presenting, you can plan how to deal with these situations appropriately. Let's say you're afraid of presenting. Some ways you can cope with this will be joining a Toastmasters group. By joining this, you can practice in a low-stakes environment and build your confidence in presenting, so that in the long run, you can present well even without much preparation. Of course, some triggers can't be avoided. In these cases, it will still be helpful to know what your triggers are so that you can take control of the situation and stay calm instead of panicking and not knowing what to do. Thirdly, take care of your physical self. Anxiety can increase or decrease according to your physical state. A prime example would be how sugary food can give you quick highs or even lows if you don't take enough, making you feel restless and fatigued which your brain may mistake for anxiety. Taking time to take some deep breaths, eating well, and exercising can all help you with anxiety. For some people, exercising is actually the best option for them as their body is forced to relieve all tension when exercising. Otherwise, they'll experience cramps. Last but not least, connecting with others can help ease feelings of anxiety. This may seem like a contradiction, but more often than not, anxiety can cause people to feel like withdrawing or isolating themselves. By pushing yourself to a comfortable limit, such as attending events or talking to your loved ones, you can talk about your feelings or busy your mind. 
By busying both yourself and your mind, you will be able to be temporarily distracted while feeling your, like you're doing something productive so that you don't end up blaming yourself. Anxiety can lead us to believe that we might be a burden, we might be alone, or that we might not be worth anything. These thoughts are not true. More often than not, when we find ourselves thinking about these what-ifs, we can realise that they are actually baseless. Try it out sometime. If you are ever thinking, I'm a burden, or something along those lines, challenge yourself by thinking, who told you that? Do you have any proof? Most of the time, it's just us being worrywarts. I hope this video has helped you identify what anxiety is and introduce some new coping methods to you. Stay tuned for our next informative video about what bipolar order is. See you!